All right, guys, it is Friday, let's see, Friday the 3rd of February, wrapped up my third trading day in the new small account challenge, and wow, what a day, <clears throat> what a day, so let, let's get into it. Um, I'm going to start off by saying today was a letdown, major letdown. As you guys know, on uh, my second day, I did hit my max loss of 200 for the day. Um, figured no big deal. You know, my average gain in my normal account is anywhere between 300 to 400 a day. So I figured I'd be able to work my way out, give it a day or two, and be right back on track. Um, but you know what, I dropped the ball today for a couple different reasons, mostly due to uh, a lack of patience in my trades. And we'll go over that. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys the worst trades of the day to begin with. Um, I took two just totally random setups that don't fit my style of trading at all. Um, and I gotta own up to that. You know, I, I just don't really know what I was thinking. I wasn't seeing a lot of my setups. And I think I started boredom trading and uh, for anyone who's ever traded, you know where that leads. Typically not a good idea. Actually, always not a good idea. <laughs> um, so my first trade was Palm. Uh, this was a, I was looking just for a quick long idea. I figured everyone had piled into this short when they saw it fading yesterday. Um, and so my idea was if it could hold around uh, the 570s, we could get a quick pop to test up here, maybe 640 area. Um, and just squeeze some shorts. <clears throat> so I got in long uh, 100 shares around 580. Popped up a little bit, didn't take anything off with the, the 30 cent gain uh, and then quickly faded and I got out on this bar right here. So it wasn't a major loss, wasn't too upsetting, um, but it's what I did after this that really messed with me. So this is where things started to slip um, because what happened was I was a little shaken up by yesterday's loss. I mean, like I said, I was confident I could get out of it. Um, but when I started the day off with a loss, looking back now, I could see my psychology kind of crumbled um, and I just got sloppy. You know, my, my trade ideas were still on point. My entries were, uh, I would say like a seven or eight out of 10. So they weren't too terrible. It was my patience. Every time any stock would give me a little bit of fuss, I would instantly get out because I was so worried about racking up more of a loss. Uh, and that's exactly what it ended up doing because I was trading so scared. And so, uh, as they say, scared money don't make money. And that is true. So, we're going to look at the next trade um, of the day, which was da -da -da -da, CBM shorts. Yes. CBM short. Okay, so I scaled into this three different trades. I was in 75 shares. Uh, first entry was at, let's see, first entry was 59, uh, 59.30, uh, 25 shares. Next entry was 59.80s, another 25 shares. And the next entry was $60, uh, another 25 shares. So I'm in 70 shares with an average around 59.90, I want to say, maybe a little less, uh, 59.89, something like that. I don't totally remember off the top of my head, but you guys can do the math. Um, so this is a pretty much a bread and butter setup right here. Uh, these are like, not what I call a, a home run trade, but you can usually expect to pull 50 cents to a dollar with a pretty good risk to reward. Uh, and I've taken these trades probably, I've probably taken this identical trade at least 500 times in my trading career. Um, and so, you know, it's something that I'm super used to. So I got in here with a decent average and it's just started to give me just a little bit of fuss, just ran up on me 50 cents or so. Um, and that was enough to get me out. But the foolish part is I didn't get out up here. <laughs> I actually got out right on this candle. So I saw it break down beneath the uh, 60s right here. And uh, once I saw it just give up a little hesitation, I didn't even wait for the next bar to print. I just got out at 59.95. So uh, pretty much a, a scratch trade, a little bit of a loss. Um, and that, I mean, looking back, you're like, what are you doing? That's just horrendous. But in the moment I was, like I said, I was, I was a little shaken up by my previous loss and the loss from the day before. 
and uh, I turn a good trade into a loser for absolutely no reason. And as you can see, uh, within you know another six or seven minutes, this thing dropped down a dollar from my entry. Actually, no, this thing dropped down a dollar fifty from my entry. So this could have been a really positive trade, would have brought me out of the hole from my previous trade, put some profit in my pocket. Um, but my lack of patience and my fear actually led me to close trade for a loss, which is pretty hard to believe when you look back at it. But uh, so it goes. Next trade. Oh, man. Embarrassed to show this one. This was a rough one. Palm. <clears throat> man, I was the sucker on these ones today. So Palm, a similar kind of story. Uh, actually, pretty much identical. Oh, that's, sorry, not Palm. My bad. We already talked about Palm. I'm talking about Naked. Naked. Pretty much a similar story to Palm. Uh, everyone hates these stocks. People love to short them. The classic low float runner. Um, this thing grinded up yesterday. And I bought off this right here at 30, or not 30, 370 rather. Um, I was in 150 shares. And I wasn't looking for anything major. I was just looking for a pop back up, maybe into the 450s or so. We got a pop up to 413. I didn't take any profit on this move, which usually I'm pretty disciplined about taking some partials off the table and paying myself. But again, with that fear running the show, I was looking for a grand slam trade. You know, I'd convinced myself that this was going to make up all my losses and I was going to absolutely kill it on this trade, which you can never try to, you know, make a trade a grand slam. It's a grand slam for you when it wants to be, but you don't get to force it. And so I mean, really just foolish trading. Um, didn't take any off the table and took it for uh, took it for a very small loss somewhere around in here. Um, so man, I mean, just looking back at these trades are hard to look at, kind of hard to stomach because they're just so so bad. Um, it's probably one of the worst trading dates I've had in a long time. So let's see the next one. Next one. Da, 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 da. All right, next one, QRVO. So this bad boy, uh, I've been watching this for a little bit. Actually, well, only one day. I watched this yesterday. Um, I actually took this down short just a little bit here. It got out break even or so. Um, but this is a, a pretty strong stock. Um, and after this gnarly move yesterday, I was curious to see how it was going to react. And so when I saw it open up in the morning <clears throat> with a decent little pop and then this super tight consolidation, uh, I liked it long. And so I got in long, uh, I believe, I know I added multiple times in throughout here, but I was in about 250 shares uh, when it was all said and done with an average that was at 64 64.10, no, 64.13, I believe, was my average, uh, 250 shares, and it ended up popping up decently, up uh, to 64.60. So, you know, I was up about 50 cents on this thing, not a bad trade at all, but again, given my mindset from uh, the previous few trades, I was thinking that this was going to take out highs. I mean, an unrealistic expectation when it's not showing you any signs that it actually wants to do that. But I figured that this was going to be the monster ripper that I was going to cash out in. Just like I had that same assumption with the previous trade. Ended up not taking a single uh, partial off of this trade. And ended up closing it for a loss down here. I mean, really just pathetic stuff. Uh, and that's why I'm doing these videos. Is to sh be uh, totally transparent and show myself what I need to work on. And like I said, this is probably the worst trading day I've had in a long time. Not necessarily with uh, monetary loss but just with how terribly I traded. I mean, it seemed like I was just always on the wrong side, or not necessarily on the wrong side, but always doing the wrong thing. All right, so Macy's, here's the next trade. Uh, awesome trade. This was a buyout rumor, but it was kind of loose news. Um, and so that I was, I mean, even with the buyout rumor, I, I was still watching it, but once I looked into it, it was a little funky. Um, so I was pretty keen on trading this. And I took it in for 100 shares at 33.60. So right on this candle right here when it broke this. <clears throat> um, 33.60, let's see, where did I cover this up? I covered this, I don't even remember.
Yeah, go figure. Okay, so thirty three sixty. So, um, I actually hold on. Sorry, guys. I sorry. I got in on this candle right here, thirty three sixty. This thing popped at a nasty little wick. I covered fifty shares, held another fifty down to thirty three. Uh, yeah, down to thirty three flat. So right here. Uh, so I made a couple bucks on this trade. But this was a, a really awesome setup and one that I expected to fade a little more than this. And it ended up fading nearly $2 for my entry, but I didn't hold any uh, piece of it. And uh, I had just a, a really pathetic share size on it. So this was something that I was confident in. I was willing to risk off of it. Uh, but again, I was trading so scared that this little spike right here made me cover half my position and I didn't re-add once it broke down. I mean, if you see a stock spike and then instantly go right the next candle, you hammer it. That is a beautiful sign if you're taking that stock short. And uh, I was just so out of it, not in tune with my trading that I didn't even capitalize on the situation. Uh, but most importantly, beyond that, I didn't hold any for the move down. And so I wasn't patient. This is what I expected was a good fade and I didn't even give it a chance to work for me. So. <clears throat> that is why I did not make any money today. So next one. <clears throat> the next one is my most unfortunate trade, believe it or not. These are all pretty unfortunate, but this one is far and away the worst trade. So ESPR, loved this one. Uh, show you guys the daily chart. Super strong stock. Uh, I mean, not overall, but the last few days. Breaking out of this 14 level. Uh, most people hate this stock, and so a lot of people are piling in short. <clears throat> and uh, what I was looking at was buying this on a pullback and getting a, some kind of short squeeze. So we had here was this setup right here, uh, just a nice little consolidation pattern. And uh, I bought in, let's see, my first entry on this was 50 shares at 1489. So I, I got in a little preemptively. Or actually, wait, let's see, wait, where exactly? Did this even hit 1489? Um, no, it didn't. Yeah, I actually got in lower. So I got in down here at 1489 uh, and ended up covering this um, for absolutely no reason. Actually, I, I have no idea why I ended up getting out of this. I think it's because I was preoccupied with QRVO. And then what happened is QRVO hit my max loss for $200 for the day and closed out my account. Um, and so I exited this position. And uh, as you can see from my entry, it ran up a pretty good uh, amount. And I completely missed out on the trade. Didn't take a penny out of it. Um, and this was, this, again, the setup I was looking for. I didn't realize it was going to run all the way up into the uh, mid-16s. But I was looking for a solid pop into the 15s. Um, and again, it's unfortunate, you know. One of these trades a day, like an ESPR or an M or um, even a QRVO, if you play these correctly, I mean, these can make your whole entire day. You know, it doesn't take that much size to play one of these catch 50 cents and call it a day um, and walk away, you know, a little richer than you were before. But, uh, you know, this is just shows that trading psychology really comes first. You can be trading the most perfect setups. But if your trading psychology isn't entirely dialed, uh, you can really get in your own way. And so this is what this really highlights is the fact that a lot of times in trading, you're your own worst enemy. It's not the market's fault. It's not that it's not providing good setups or that you can't find a profitable setup or any of those things. I mean, there's a million different ways to trade the stock market and to trade it profitably. But the majority of people just get in their own way. And this was a perfect example of that today. So... As usual, I hope you guys got something from this. Uh, hopefully my loss taught someone out there a lesson because I know it, it definitely reminded me of some lessons that I've had to learn before. Uh, but the market will do that from time to time. If you slip up, it will definitely remind you of uh, what you need to work on and where you came from. So <clears throat> this was like some very old school trading for me. And this is how I traded when I first got into the stock market. Um, anytime a stock would go red on you or... You got a little bit of pushback, you would instantly get out because you're so scared of losing money and you don't want to be like the 99 or 90 percent of people who lose money in the stock market. But the irony is, is you end up being in that group because 
you're not giving your trades any time to actually work out. I mean, the stock market, nothing is instantaneous. Sometimes you'll get lucky and get in on the right time and it'll just instantly flush out. But a lot of times it takes, um, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to even an hour for an idea to really materialize and for it to show you that, yeah, you're actually going in the right direction or you're, you're playing it correctly. Um, and that's where it becomes, you got to be able to accept the risk on the trade. You have to go into it saying, you know what, I'm going to risk off this level. And I'm going to let it do whatever it wants. And if it gets down to that level, that's okay. I've already accepted that risk. So being able to fully accept that risk is a, is a really important factor in trading. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, guys, I hope you got something from this. Uh, my loss on the day, I'll throw up my p &L. It was a negative $202 loss, which means for my first three days or my first week of trading, because I started on a Wednesday, um, my grand total for the week is a negative $350 loss. So unfortunate, but I will persevere and I will be back here on Monday with new videos and hopefully a little bit of a better story to tell you guys. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy your weekend and uh, I'll see you guys bright and early.